Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Margot, I'm French and I live in Denmark. And today I want to share with you what foreigners and especially French people might uh, need some getting used to if they are in Denmark. So stay tuned. So the number one would be personal space. Danish people don't like when there's people super close to them. Like, for example, let's take the example of, uh, of transportation. If you're in a bus or something and there's plenty of seats available um, and you sit right next to them, that, that wouldn't make them feel very comfortable. Um, same in the train and stuff. Like, obviously, if there's no space you and there's one seat available, then in that case, that's okay. Me coming from France, coming especially from Paris, that's a very busy city. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Paris. Paris, but if you have, maybe you know what I'm talking about. If you take the subway, which is called the metro in France, uh, it's very busy. Personal space doesn't exist there. It's it's most of the time of the day anyway. It's always very packed and it's impossible to have uh, personal space. I guess Danish people that live in Copenhagen might be more like used to that. Foreigners and French people, please remember that if you come to Denmark, try to keep some distance and leave some personal space for Danish people that also includes lineups uh, at the supermarket and things like that don't don't get glued too much to people they will look at you like weird you know like back off you know second thing that may be a bit difficult for foreigners and especially french people uh, it's uh, taking your shoes off when you go inside somebody's house that's a very important rule like that's uh, just something that is really part of the culture here in denmark you come in your house you take your shoes off it's the first thing you do when you come back home and it's the last thing you do when you leave your house in the morning it's to put your shoes on so yeah and i think it's great right it's so much more better for hygiene and all that you don't need to clean your floors as much anyway too because there's not dirt all over the place so yeah that's something that they do even at parties and things like that it's usually very common for danish people to take their shoes off um and then when they're home they either go barefoot or they have this kind of sandals things like that, that they uh, wear inside the house. And uh, that's something that definitely surprised me uh, in a good way, for sure. But surprised me because I'm from France and uh, we don't do that. Uh, I mean, there's there might be some families in France that might be might do that. But in my circle of friends and family, it was definitely not a thing. So we would just walk around in our place with shoes on and stuff. So yeah, that's, that's just how it is. So um, definitely something to get used to in Denmark. The third thing uh, that need that you would need some getting used to uh, foreigners, especially not necessarily French people that much, but anyway, I'd still wanted to mention that one is small talk. Um, they don't do small talk here in Denmark. Uh, it's very uncommon. If you are, for example, from a, an English speaking country, maybe like the United States, for example, and you are very used to small talk, it might be a bit difficult here in Denmark because you will have to adapt to the fact that people don't do that really. Me personally, coming from France, uh, we definitely are not really s people doing any small talk either. Uh, so that was not that difficult for me to get used to, but but I have lived in other countries as well, so it was definitely something I noticed uh, here in Denmark. So uh, if you don't know people, they will not really necessarily talk to you about anything and the weather or random stuff like that. So yeah. The only exception I would say with small talk is probably elderly people here in Denmark. There's some very sweet, nice elderly people uh, and they, I think they're lonely or um, a bit bored. So they definitely come to you and speak more to you than other people from other ages here uh, in Denmark. It happened to me this morning in the supermarket, uh, a Danish uh, old man uh, started speaking to me and then on the way home as well, an old lady started speaking to me as well. In like in like 20 minutes, I had two people started making conversation to me. And um, yeah, that's something that uh, is uh, the exception, I would say, to the, to the rule. The fourth thing uh, that may require some getting used to um, and also for French people as well is the weather. The weather is very unpredictable here in Denmark. I'm here at Mary Island Beach and there's no sign to stop. 
obviously Denmark is big or small islands all over the place. So you're always very uh, close to the sea. So uh, it's very windy uh, It's and the weather is very changing. Uh, in Paris, it's, it's not close to the sea. So it's no problem for you most of the time to have an umbrella. Whereas here, it's almost impossible to have an umbrella with you because it will just fly away, blow away. I've given up on the umbrella situation. Uh, I definitely need to buy myself a proper uh, raincoat because I don't own one that's, that's good enough. Um, and yeah, but just to say that the weather is very changing, uh, especially in April. April is, is, I don't even know where to begin to explain, to describe April to you in Denmark. It's, um, it's a very uh, crazy changing weather. So you just have to be aware of it and be prepared and uh, just be dressed and always keep in mind that whatever the forecast, weather forecast says, it might not be accurate and you should always anticipate and have something ready in your bag or something in case the weather changes. The fifth thing that foreigners and French people might find a bit difficult here if they come to Denmark is the fact that Danish people are very direct. They speak their mind uh, and they go right to the point. Um, and that's that might be difficult coming from where you are from. It depends where you are from. But um, I would say French people are pretty direct as well, but definitely not as much as Danes. So that's something that, again, you need to get uh, used to and keep an open mind. Sixth thing that might be difficult for foreigners and French people, do not act like you're better than everybody else. Uh, I don't know where you are from. I don't know your personality. It depends on so many different factors why you may think you're better than everyone. And just so you know, that will not be seen as a good thing here in Denmark. Uh, people, I've mentioned that in, an, in a previous video, I'm gonna put the link right up here. But just so you know, uh, Danish people uh, don't like that at all, okay? don't don't brag don't say you're better than everyone don't start saying i earned that amount of money i'm doing i have that position uh you know like this kind of like spotlight like i'm so good i'm so great i'm so amazing that's really definitely something that uh will uh, not be seen as a positive thing here in denmark they will probably look at you like what the hell just Seven thing that especially like 100% French people will have a very hard time getting used to here in Denmark is the bakeries and the bread. I have mentioned it in previous videos. If you know me, you know I like my bread and my pastries and all that. So it's uh, it's definitely something I have had a very hard time with. I still do now, especially now because I'm pregnant, I have cravings and I wish I could have really all those lovely pastries in France. So uh, it's definitely very hard for French people. Um, if, if you are from another country, it depends if that's a thing for you or not. But yes, definitely uh, bakeries and proper proper bread, I mean, for me as a French person, what I consider a proper bread. The recycling system, especially when it comes to bottles. Uh, in France, we don't have any system implemented to recycle bottles and when you get money back and things like that. That does not exist in France. So we have, of course, a bit of recycling in France, like you have different bins and stuff, but a lot of people do not recycle, don't think about it and don't bother. And that's just how it is. Um, in Denmark, people are excellent at recycling. Um, wherever you live, if you are in your house, you have your special bins. If you are in an apartment complex, a building, you will definitely have a, a, an area with all those bins and they will usually, when you move in, give you a manual so you know exactly what you're supposed to do in that place. Uh, yeah, so definitely something that may require some getting used to depending on where you're from. There's a, a recycling system, so all the bottles and cans that you buy, whether it's alcohol or just sodas or water or juice or whatever, um, there will be a little sign on uh, a little logo, should I say, on, on the packaging. It shows you that this bottle can be taken to the recycling uh, machine. So uh, what usually people do, they they just get a big bag and they get as many bottles as they can and then they come to the machine and they just 
put them in there. And then you get a uh, little receipts that you can take to your supermarket and you get money back. So that's that's very positive. It's great. They, like Danish people always think of the environment. You have to definitely uh, throw metals in a certain bin, glass in a certain bin, paper in a certain bin, uh, rest of food and things like that. So you just need uh, to be aware of it and read through the instructions that they give you so you know what you're supposed to do. Number nine, please Danish people, pitch in for me and comment below um, because it depends on what supermarket you go to. Uh, I was a bit confused by that, so I would love for you if, if you have any explanation to please put it in the comments below. But uh, for example, there's supermarkets that I go to and I see uh, the strong liquors, like the strong alcohol, is behind the cashier. So you have to ask for it and it's like in a locked glass uh, door. That's something that's definitely surprised me. I was a bit confused confused by it because the beer aisle and other alcohols it's fine but then if you want I don't know vodka or whatever uh, you have to ask the cashier for it um, and I found that a bit confusing because if you go to Footex for example uh, you don't have that then everything is in one aisle um, so I'm a bit confused why in some areas uh, in some why in some supermarkets alcohol is in a certain place and you have to request it and some places you don't need to do that so please comment below I'm very curious about that and the tenth thing that may require some getting used to is controversial. I have mentioned it in a previous video. Uh, it's the lack of options in supermarkets. I stick to my point about the fact that there's such little options in supermarkets. I'm sorry, guys. I've noticed some people completely agree with me or completely disagree with me. Uh, so it's it really depends on, uh, I guess, where you grew up, right? Because when you grow up in a place like in France, you have so many options in supermarkets. I guess maybe it's because of the size of the country that's quite bigger uh, compared to Denmark. But when you're used to so many options for everything and then you move to another country and there's such little options compared to what you're used to it gets like it's like a little slap in the face it's hard to downgrade it's easy to upgrade it's hard to downgrade in that way um, so yeah it's hard for me um, for example I love our pro yogurt okay it's plant-based yogurt so yogurt there's like four flavors I think in France there must be like 30 I'm not even kidding so many different brands so many different flavors like so many different consistencies and that's just to sh give you one one example but yeah um, I do hear the point of some Danish people saying why do you need so many different kinds of butters and this and that and yes I agree for some things absolutely but others yeah we definitely love to to have uh, more options of for example another one is a dark chocolate um, you have a lot of marabou and all that but dark chocolate you don't have that many different flavors so it gets a bit boring over the years uh, to always eat the same thing so yeah that's just how it is and I hear the point of view of those who disagree with that and that is just how I see it from my perspective growing up in another place. So those were the 10 things that need some getting used to here in Denmark for foreigners and for French people. Um, I hope you liked that video. If you have any comments, please comment below anything about those 10 points I mentioned. If you have anything else to add, um, please do it in the comment uh, section. I read every single comment. It's very important to me. I think we can really learn from one another and I love to hear everybody's different points of views and perspectives. So yeah, definitely comment below if you have anything to say and uh, please hit the like button and I will see you guys for another video next week. Bye.